Hello, and we're back with aquaculture engineering. This is lecture number five. This will be a review of basic biological characteristics and uh, requirements of important aquaculture species. Uh, species. Uh, we'll be talking uh, about six of them. And we'll start with this lecture all about uh, uh, tilapia or the Orchromis uh, species. Uh, species. At the end of this lecture, you are uh, expected to be able to understand the characteristics and production cycles of tilapia, learn the various uh, selection criteria in its production, identify uh, the environmental and water quality requirements, and lastly, uh, become familiar with the cultural practices and other considerations in tilapia production. Uh, this week, we're going to tackle another uh, species, the national fish of the Philippines, uh, bangus or milkfish. You might not be familiar about this, but a uh, previous administration of the country was keen on making uh, the tilapia species the national fish. And then an exotic species of tilapia uh, named after the president of this administration became a pest in pond cultures. Uh, this is where the selection criteria for the species uh, comes in. Tilapia is grown for its uh, firm flesh in mild flavor. Uh, there, though there have been cases of an algal taste Okay, and probably you've experienced that as well, since they, this are uh, this this species eat natural food in the pond, where algal bloom could, could happen. Uh, it's not really that uh, uh, big of an issue. Also, uh, tilapia are known to spawn easily in fresh water. Uh, and while they they are uh, urihaline, they can uh, also tolerate seawater, but with, with without uh, it being able to reproduce in this kind of environment. And they would first to be uh, need to be acclimatized in this kind of environment as well. Also, tilapia uh, tolerates uh, poor water quality, and is good with warm water environments. And since they are good with warm water environments, they are uh, easily uh, able to grow in these kinds of in warm environments. Let us take a look at a uh, sample video of the grow of growing of tilapia.
Oh, so you've seen the video. We'll now talk in the uh, stages of what happened in that video. So once ready for breeding, uh, mature tilapia, okay, in, a, in the population, tend to seek out shallow, undisturbed areas with a firm uh, substrate or material. Males tend to group together and are very territorial. Uh, they establish and defend territories within the nesting area. And with most uh, tilapia species, uh, species, breeding happens in nests, okay? Established by the male at the bottom of uh, the uh, water, of that uh, bottom of, of that shallow area. Uh, and this can be uh, appearing at the tank bottom, devoid of algae, or in the case of ponds, uh, a dugout, a shallow dugout, uh, small, shallow dugout. Okay, so courtship and happens, okay, and the release of eggs by the female are rapid but in uh, batches. A mature female uh, visits and lingers around the nesting area entering the nest when it is already ready to spawn or, okay, or lay, it, lay, lay its eggs. Eggs number uh, hundreds to thousands depending on the size of the female. And afterwards, the male uh, discharges its sperm in this, uh, in this eggs. This is called uh, external uh, fertilization. After fertilization, the female takes okay, the eggs into her mouth, uh, taking it also everywhere it goes. So that uh, it is safe and uh, uh, quiet for the, the growing or the brooding eggs. So the eggs hatch within three to five days, depending on temperature, and the fry feed on their yolk, yolk sac for a day. The, the female doesn't actively eat during this time and really relies on passive filter feeding. The hatch fry are retained in the mouth of the females from between uh, 10 to 15 days, going from around six to around uh, 20 millimeters in, uh, during that period. So feeding and recover of the brood fish uh, then happens, okay? So the brood stock is recovered and then fed, it, it feeds. So it, it, it is now then available for the next uh, spawning. Also, uh, the fry are collected fry. They are now reared in tanks for two to three months and six to eight months in the ground. So the, the opposite uh, cycle is uh, for a specific uh, hatching where the eggs are collected from the mother's mouth and hatched in a hatching jar. But it's very, very much similar. Uh, cycle altogether. Okay, let's go now to the environmental and water quality requirements. For tilapia, water can be dirty, as we have said a while ago, but it should still be free from aquatic plants. Water should also be properly aerated to sustain the required biological oxygen uh, demand of the uh, species. Okay. Water should also uh, be transparent by around 30 to 40 centimeters as measured using the Sechi disk. And the temperature should be warm, at least about 20 degrees Celsius. So the warmer, the better. Again, uh, they prefer warmer waters as we have said a while ago. Now the humidity, so the radiation, rainfall, and wind are factors to the temperature of the water and should be also likewise looked into. The pan soil, okay, should have low permeability, okay. Uh, seepage and percolation should be minimal. 
And the ideal soil pH should be not lower than 7.0, which, mean which means it's uh, just neutral or basic. And why is this? Because acidic soils can inhibit the growth of uh, the natural food of, this, of the tilapia in the water. And likewise, higher uh, pH, okay, meaning lower, uh, I mean, lower value of pH can also kill off the uh, tilapia. So the, 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 feed, the tilapia feeds on natural food, but artificial feed uh, is introduced beginning with the fry stage. Uh, for other biological and uh, operational concerns, the presence of competitors and predators in the area uh, should be monitored and acted upon. Uh, cutfish and mudfish are some of predators of tilapia, fry, and fingerling while frogs, snakes, and birds eat uh, fry and uh, the, the fingerling and the grown tilapia. Also, last uh, predator, the turtles, which uh, eat fingerlings and even destroy the pond structure, okay, the, the dikes. So some control, uh, th there should be control for this uh, happenstances. Now, tilapia feeds on natural food in the water, as we have said. And so, fertilizer for the, the chem chemotrophic organism should be added besides the feed for the, uh, for the tilapia themselves. Why? Because uh, there should be a good combination of natural food and feed. And if it's an intensive uh, culture, the fertilizer should be added for the chemotrophic organisms. Another aspect of tilapia culture is the stocking density. As can be seen, the figure should be two pieces per m squared, uh, four to five pieces per m squared, and six to ten uh, pieces per m squared for in extensive, semi-intensive, and intensive cultures, respectively. Uh, the artificial feeding regimen is shown in table two for uh, various tilapia sizes from the fry stage to grown stages. Uh, at eight months, an adult tilapia would be at least 400 grams in weight. Uh, the feed type is the aquatic feeds being used, uh, starting with powder and crumbled form, and then we have the extruded floating uh, for the latter stages of growth. In more intensive cultures, uh, regular monitoring and control of environmental parameters such as uh, temperature, turbidity, and the BOD are required. They can be automated. Production efficiency can be uh, maintained by obtaining a quality uh, food stock free of deformities and uh, diseases to produce quality fingerlings. Uh, <clears throat> the recommended weight for the brood stock is 50 to 150 grams for early maturing strains and 150 to 200 grams for late maturing strains. Also, uh, egg quality is um, deteriorating as observed with uh, 1.5 year, years after spawning, the start of spawning. Also another uh, key to a good harvest is uh, the feed conversion ratio. It, and it is in this case that sex reversal by hormones is important. Male tilapia are preferred since they are bigger than females. In the fry stage, tilapia have a differentiated fry. Okay. So the sex is not determined for this fry. With hormonal inputs, particularly synthetic uh, androgen steroids, uh, the, the fry can be induced to uh, change into male. Okay. And this has been in practice for a long time already. Okay, in the next uh, lecture, we'll be dealing with uh, milkfish.